Hello computer cooks and welcome back to Retro Recipes. So I've kind of been teasing you recently about a little project I've had on the boil for quite a while. But it's finally time to give you a taste. I'll stop with the recipe puns now and get straight to the meat of this issue. So you'll remember very well my video where I tried to make a hit song on my Commodore Music Maker 2 Red Edition. It's had thousands of views and people have specifically said I need to do more of those. It also meant so much that a few of you actually joined my Patreon. And I do have a favour to ask. If any of you want me to continue with these videos, that's really the best way to ensure that I can buy the time to keep making these, fingers crossed. Putting them out on a weekly basis, I'm going to need your help as well. I hope it's a win-win situation. And people, and people have specifically, specifically said, said I need to do more of those. Well. So I thought, great, I can do that. However, I don't really want to do it on the computer museum workstation there. So I thought, I need to build a proper Commodore 64 Music Maker 2 workstation. When you think of bands like the Pet Shop Boys who used to use the Fairlight, it was a huge keyboard with a computer keyboard on top and a light pen and a monitor display. So I wanted something that was evocative of that, but powered by the Commodore 64. Now, a friend of mine recently abandoned the LCD Sanyo TV, and I'm kind of like a womble. I like to make good use of the things that the everyday folks leave behind. Hey look, it's me. Oh, that's not me. That's me. Also, my current Commodore 64 is very much in use, and so I ordered a new one. Unfortunately, for those of you that follow my live videos, you'll have seen the unboxing of that, and, well, it wasn't very well packed. So I'm gonna to have to fix up that case too, because I don't wanna let a genuine Commodore 64 die. You know, we have to look after these things. And while we fix it up, well, you've heard of Spinal Tap. What about Vinyl Wrap? So let's rescue another Commodore 64 and rebuild its shattered case, build the Commodore Music Maker station around it, and some other really cool, very special surprises you are gonna love. Stay tuned for this special two-part episode of Retro Recipes. So I started out with a sound-treated corner of the room and hmm, might have to look at refurbishing that Omnibot. Maybe the dogs too. But of course we need a base for the Commodore Music Maker station and I found this pretty good value. Couldn't believe the instructions were printed out of focus. Still, I worked it out. Now, obviously we don't have a light pen here, but I do have this clear surface. Basically, this is gonna be our control surface, and it's one big mouse area for the good old Commodore 1351. But, you know, looking at this control surface, I think it needs one of those special little treatments that I mentioned in my intro. I was looking for some phrasing that was associated with the Commodore 64, but also played into the area of music. And, well, it could only be this, couldn't it? But what am I doing with it? And why have I changed it to white on black? experience. <laughs> <laughs> Let's 
this view. I want to thank Amazon for providing this cardboard. Less floppy. And on. Now the obvious thing to do is look for bits of plastic or whatever that you have around that you can use without having to build too much. So I found this piece of plastic. Um, this is about the right width. So I'm just going to hacksaw all of this off around. Of course I'm not. Although... No. Ah, ah, my finger! Oh no, sorry. It's fine. Two. Down. Six to go. Ow. Fine. Welcome to Cutting Envelopes. Ah, oh, my finger! No, it's fine. Honestly, my worst nightmare, that is. <laughs> Nearly there. Just having my lunch. Sorry, guys. I'm going to use some parcel tape. Docking complete. Sticky, sticky, sticky. Done it backwards, didn't I? So our light box is shaping up pretty nicely. We just need some rigidity here. And then just going to tuck it into one of these pockets. There we go. All right, guys, one LED light box complete with ready-made self-adhesive attachments. We can take the UPS sticker off it now because we've arrived. So drop it, don't drop it. Yeah, so it had occurred to me that if I printed white on black, that the black would filter out any light, leaving only the white showing through. Well, let's see if it works. <laughs> Sorry. That's cool. Can we go green? Any other color you want. Oh, that's typical. We are actually seeing the edges of this coming through. I should open these out a little bit like this. Just by pulling it, just eases the adhesive uh, off of it. Let's secure those. And finally, we have our floppy connector here. And I'm going to make that a little more robust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hello. She seems to be having fun. Leave her alone. Let's plug it in. Solid. Press play. Aww, that's so cool. Reminds me a little bit of Pac Man. I'm hot, tired, and hungry. I'm gonna go have some ketchup. So this cable contains a 5 volt power line, which is the same as USB. That's how I was able to use a USB charger when I made my own cheap, sexy Commodore 64 PSU. So what we can do is tap into this cable here with this USB cable, and then I'll just use a female to female connector to connect up to the light box. 
to help me get to there. And because we're not going to be using this anymore with our broken bread bin style case, we have to unfortunately say goodbye to this back plate that I so carefully designed and measured. Uh, but I'll keep it handy, that way I can always transfer back to the C64 style if needed. Maybe I'll put it on eBay. Whoops. Careful. Probably keep those screws in there though, just to look kind of cool. Yeah, I really blue gunned the heck out of this thing. Wow. Luckily Commodore made this a lot tougher than this robotics plastic. Until next time. Back to our original state. Oh no! Wrong end! No, that's right. End. So you'll remember this grommet was actually a bit bigger than we needed it to be. And it turns out that the retro gods had a reason for that. So they knew we needed to fit two cables that were a little bit sticking out like that. This is our 5 volt line that runs to the LED. So now I'm trying to get it into there. I don't understand why they put string in these things. So it's probably our 5 volts in our ground. That's it. 4.95. That means we can lose these other cables. So because this is a unique situation, my plan is actually to try to melt away this little bit of cable and solder in straight onto that in place. Wouldn't usually do it that way, but it's just saves digging in and spoiling our potentiometer connections. It's got my trusty soldering iron. And here we go. See the cable there. And tin the cable. I mean, in between each time, <laughs> which is why I'm losing my voice, I'm wiping the end of the soldering iron on the sponge just to keep the plastic off it and uh, keep it clean. We like to keep it clean here on Retro Recipes. So then we'll add a proper bit of solder. And then we'll just reheat that and pull our 5 volts cable onto it. There it goes. Lovely. Do the same again just here, splice in. Tin the tip of the soldering iron to get the conductivity through to the wire, just to tin it. And finally, we put cable onto it. Okay, so I've had a little delivery arrive. It's a USB female to female connector. And it's gonna allow me to actually truly let this device power the table. It's our cable that we soldered into the CMM2 red. And then this is the power cable for the table light. And now the theory is we just turn on the Commodore 64 and it powers the table.
What's that? You think it's cool? You too? Mm. Not you. Mm. Oh, we're being burgled. Well, it's taking shape, guys. It is taking shape. The only thing missing is the monitor and the computer itself. Well, we are at the halfway point. The dogs think it's pretty cool, and I hope you do too. So join me for a future episode where we'll refurbish the entire mainboard, try to fix this shattered case, wrap the whole thing in removable black vinyl, and do a few finishing touches to that rescued monitor to make it fit in with the style of the CMM2 Red. And perhaps most importantly of all, I'll finally sit down at this brand new workstation and start making a brand new song on the Commodore 64. I mean, the CMM station. But right now I've got to run. The dogs have got the taste of blood, I mean ketchup, and well, all I can say is please like this video, subscribe, and consider sharing it on Twitter or even Google+. Until next time, cheerio.